What's up everybody? Sean, aka Crack is Cheaper, um, coming to you from the living room. This is the first real video on the 180 that uh, I'll be showing you guys today. I did mention uh, last week that uh, I would be giving you some tips on how you too can become a member of the Ecotech product test team. So here's the skinny. There were only 20 people that uh, in the whole world that made it into the first round of the product test team and yours truly was lucky enough to get in on one of those slots but I'll tell you uh, there's nothing special about me besides the, the hat and the scarf which they know nothing about and I'm only wearing this for you guys because uh, here in sunny California I know the rest of the planet is probably frozen right now except for my friends down under but uh, yeah it's like 80 degrees here in January so this is my winter theme get up <laughs> just so the rest of the nation and colder parts of the world don't feel too jelly but I guess I kind of ruined that because I told you it's 80 here anyhow all I did to get in on the product test team is I have my favorite uh, manufacturers that I follow on Facebook and I like their, their pages. I click that follow button. So every time any of my favorite uh, Reef Gear um, Facebook pages comes out with some update or news, boom, I get a notification on my phone. I work from home, so I'm always at my computer and the you know I get that little Facebook desktop notification, click it, boom, bam. And there was an announcement there that said, hey, if you're interested in joining the product test team, first thing was the requirement was like reply to this message and say count me in they sent a link somewhere else to say count me in and then uh, you had to fill out an application which was pretty simple a couple of questions of like tell us about yourself and why you think you'd be good for this uh, product test team as a, a participant so I just kind of described the setup that I have um, and you know I can tell you that the people that are on this team aren't going to be there forever. Uh, we were told that uh, we get three to four months before they start rotating people in and out. I think they want to get fresh ideas and opinions from you guys uh, about their products. So um, can't let any cats out of the bag just yet. But um, if you are interested in the, being on the next round or the next round or the next round I highly recommend that you not only like their Facebook page but you click um, I believe it's a drop down current you know Facebook is always changing stuff but um, right now I believe it's a drop down that says get notifications enable that because I think that the first few people that did that um, I saw their uh, well we're not going to get into that, but I think first come, first serve has a lot to do with it. So I think if you're making sure that you're getting all the latest updates from um, Ecotech Marine from uh, Facebook, then, uh, man, who knows? Maybe next quarter or next summer or next year, maybe you could be trying out some of the cool new gear too. But All right, so getting on to the, the actual topic for um, this video today I know that's what most of you probably came to watch but if you want to stick around I'm going to show you a cool mod to do on uh, your GFO reactor uh, the one that I have been using on this tank behind me this tank behind this this tank behind me um, is uh, the bulk reef supply carbon slash GFO um, reactor and it's kind of set up like an RODI canister uh, filter and the thing that I don't like about that is water spills out of it every single time I go to um, change the carbon or the GFO so I got to put a bucket under it and you know be very careful and that thing is you know well I'm pretty close to the camera right now but it's pretty big I'll show you guys a, a picture of it here in a second but um, it's heavy too so I have a solution for you that is twofold. No water spilling. 
And then second of all, it's more stable to do it my way. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so we're gonna modify a reactor so that we can easily, every week, add a teaspoon or a gram or whatever it is that we need to do to keep our tank stable because the whole key with your reef is to keep your parameters stable. If you're changing GFO out by a cup, cup and a half on a system this big once a month, you're gonna be fluctuating in your phosphate levels. So if you have a reactor that you're just adding a teaspoon of GFO to every week, your parameters are gonna be more stable, but in the most traditional equipment that's out there, this can be a little bit tedious. So what I'm gonna show you today is a quick, dirty, cheap fix, cheap reactor, and it's, it's, it takes two minutes a week to just add your GFO. So let's get to it. Okay guys, this is the reactor that I would highly recommend that you use with the Fosban or with your GFO. Fosban Reactor 550 um, from Two Little Fishes. SPS Coral Store showed me this mod and now I'm going to show it to you. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. This canister, let me move you guys back. This canister has this top piece that's inside here and it's all connected already. What I'm gonna do is just take everything out and we're gonna start from scratch so that it's very easy for you guys to, to follow along here. So there's a, a nice bunch of parts that come inside this canister. It's gonna sound weird, but take it all apart so that you just have this empty canister, all right? First thing we're going to do is, we didn't take this apart. This has got the, the red screen on the bottom, a piece of foam, and the tubing. Now also inside the box is a little piece of black tubing like this. You're going to find and locate that and put that on the end of that rigid tubing. Next there should be a, a a barb fitting, it's like a coupling for, for tubing. You're going to put that into the top of that black piece there. Next, you're going to find this rubber elbow. You're going to put that onto your the other end of your coupling there. Looks like you can pick an in or an out on this. I'm going to double check which is which. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So. Pick what's best for you, which one to use, and then find this fitting and put this side into the top where you decide that you want it to be your inlet. I'm choosing here. It just makes the most sense to me because I'm going to have my ball valve right here that's going to go into the tank and this is where it's hanging anyways, so that gives me flexibility with the outlet to go wherever it needs to go. So this is my decision to put the inlet there. Now you're gonna take that whole abortion that you just made and you're gonna stuff it back in here. And as you can see, it's sticking out too far. But if you didn't use this little jumper, it would be too short. And then when you put GFO in here, the whole thing would fall apart inside. So you're going to need to trim this down a little bit and make sure that um, this elbow right here will connect to your uh, that fitting for your inlet. I'm going to trim that down and then show you what it looks like when it's done. So I, I didn't actually trim it. I just, Mr. Strongman, whatever you want to call it, forced it down onto the rigid tubing. That way if I did it too short, I could just slip it off a little bit and get it to the right height. So yeah, I'm out of breath because it was tough. So right now, it looks like it's gonna line up. I gotta put that fitting in and we should be good. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's done. So basically, we took, just as a recap, we took everything out 
except for the tube that was attached to the red screen. Put a piece of foam in there. This is what the GFO is going to rest on. And then also included in the package is this black tubing. Maybe they intended for you to do this. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not the type to read instructions and if you're watching this, neither are you. So I hope this was helpful. Um, in between here at the top, there is a barb coupling. I'm trying to get a good angle here so you can see it. And then there's a rubber elbow that uh, everything has to be fitting just perfect so that this red screen is firmly seated against the bottom and the top is all connected and there's there's no play. If this red screen is sitting up here and you put GFO on top of this screen it's gonna pull the rigid tubing out of the the rubber elbow and it's going to make a mess inside your canister and probably just blast your GFO into your sump or wherever. Um, I recommend running your outlet into a filter sock. Um, that way as you're unscrewing the top on this every week, you just dump in you know, your teaspoon or whatever. You're, you're going to have to measure things out to see how you're going to keep your GFO stable over a long period of time. But um, this is so much better. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, Aaron at SPS Coral Store taught me how to do this because I personally don't like seeing big uh, roller coasters and uh, phosphates in my tank. I'm hoping that this is going to have an impact on better coral growth and color long term. And um, I'm not going to be making a mess under my stand dropping a whole um, RO style canister down on the ground and having the water that's in there spill out. So, sorry about any shakiness. I had to take this off the tripod to get down low underneath my sump. And yes, it's time to change a filter sock. Don't give me a hard time. Or do. I don't care. <clears throat> but yes, this definitely needs to be changed today. I will not argue that. So this is the canister that I'm currently using. This BRS jumbo reactor. And, you know, it will make a mess in here every time I open this up. So, I think I'm still going to keep using this for carbon. Uh, because I don't change my carbon as often. I use some really good stuff. That's the stuff. It's the BRS bulk premium premium carbon. Um, but anyhow, if I'm only in here every... Uh, you know, six to eight weeks. I don't care about, you know, getting a small little one gallon pail and putting it under it and making a small amount of um, a mess in here because I can dry that up. But if I'm doing that once a week, this is a chore. So I recommend if you already have one of these and you're hating life too for getting spills all the time from this unit, I recommend just using it for carbon and not putting GFO in it at all. Instead, use the Fosban 550 modified as your GFO reactor. That way you can just unscrew the lid and add a teaspoon or two or whatever your tank demand is every week without any mess. Well I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you uh, want to see more of the 180 as it grows, uh, it's what six months old now but this is the first time I've actually shown you any of it, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, hit that subscribe button to see more of this tank and all the others of course. Happy reefing everyone!